is used to control river flooding. And hard engineering is where we would um, try to control the flow of the river using some form of technology. There's various ways you can do this. The first one I'm going to talk about is dams and reservoirs. So imagine the river's flowing downhill and there's a significant flood risk further down here. You would build a dam, which is a big wall, probably wider at the bottom than it is at the top because it's going to need to hold a lot of water, so it needs to be quite safe. Now, as the river flows downhill, it's going to gather behind that dam. The dam is going to trap it and it will look something like that. And then it can release the water through really slowly and areas further downstream um, are going to have the flow of water regulated so they're going to be less threatened by flooding. And dams can be really good because they create this reservoir behind and the reservoir can be used for all kinds of recreation purposes. Um, and they're also good because they're pretty reliable in that you know you can control the flow of that water. What you can do as well is you can create electricity, hydroelectric power through that dam as well. Um, they can be bad in that they can prevent um, various species from migrating up and down the river. That can be bad for some, some species of fish, for example. And also dams can build up sediment behind them because it's basically slow flowing or still water there. So they can need a little bit of maintenance as well. Second one is channel straightening. If you've got a very windy river and you've got excessive rainfall, that water is going to take a long time to get down that river and therefore it's sitting in that area for longer and therefore more likely to flood. If you can straighten that river and get rid of those bends, you can move the water on more quickly. That river will now take the water away much more quickly than it would have done when it was the big windy river. The third thing is embankments. Now if I take a cross section of the river here, so that's looking sideways at the river, and the river banks would be here, in here. What we can do is we can build up embankments or artificial levees. There's another video that, on here that talks about levees. If you're not sure what they are, look at the meanders and levees video. But if we actually build embankments or artificial levees, that means as that water in the river rises to flood levels, rather than overflowing the banks, it's going to be held in by these embankments. And embankments are, are pretty good because they can look quite natural. Um, and they're, they're great as long as the water doesn't flow over the embankments because if it does it can get obviously trapped on the floodplain and you've made the problem worse, you don't want the water to go over the embankments. And the last one that I'm going to talk about is flood relief channels. So if you've got a river here and it's in danger of flood, you can put some channels in place so that in times of extreme um, river levels those channels will take some of the water away and take it to somewhere else, maybe a big storage area somewhere else. You can have storage pools, which are built in uh, some of the newer housing estates that you see. And those storage pools can then fill up um, and let the river water overflow into them rather than overflow into the surrounding houses. One, how do dams work? Dams work by trapping the flow of the river and building up a large reservoir behind the dam. Um, and this means that you can control the flow of water further downstream too. How does channel straightening work? Channel straightening is all about speeding up the flow of the river so that the water leaves the area quickly rather than flowing into the surrounding land. Three, how do embankments work? Embankments or artificial levees uh, work by preventing overflow, so stopping the river from overflowing. Four, how do flood relief channels work? Flood relief channels direct water away from the river um, and therefore reduce the risk of flood. And that's it for hard engineering.